In this lesson, we are going to learn how to solve a system of linear equations, but now we are going to use the technique of substitution. So if you've been following this chapter, what we've done so far in this chapter, number one, we learned how to find the solution by graphing. So we would draw the two lines and then we would find the intersection and that would be the answer. Then in the previous section, we used the process called elimination, which is when we took the two equations and we wrote them like this, where the x's were on top of the x's and the y's were on top of the y's. And then what we tried to do was to eliminate either the x's or we eliminated the y's. And we did that by either adding these two equations together or subtracting them. Now we are going to do a third method, and this method is called substitution. Okay, so we all three methods help us to achieve the same goal, which is to find out where the two equations intersect. Okay, so that's, I hope you can see the bigger picture of where we're at at the moment. So with substitution, it's pretty straightforward. What you want to do is try to, um, so, so step one, get either an x or a y alone. So what I mean by that is, for example, you could take this equation over here and you could see that this y is looking pretty good because it's got no numbers in front of it. Um, so what we'll do is, and, and what some teachers like to do is they'll call this equation number one, they'll call this equation number two. And then what you do is you take one of those equations and you try to get either x or y by itself. So I'm going to take this second one. Okay, and I'm going to get the y by itself. So what do I mean? Well, what I mean is I'm going to take the 4x over to the other side, and there we have it. This y is completely alone. We will call that number 3. Then what you do is we now use a process of substitution. The word substitution means that you are going to replace something. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll now look at the equation that we haven't used yet. We will look for the y because here we also have a y. And what we will do is we will take all of this and we will put it in that y's position. So we're replacing, we're replacing this y with 10 plus 4x, but it must go in brackets. So what some teachers will say, not all teachers, but they'll say, what we are gonna do is we're gonna substitute equation number three into equation number one. And so you end up with 2x minus, then in brackets, just put the 10 plus 4x in that y's place, equals to minus x. If this feels weird right now, that's fine. It's normal to feel like that in the beginning, but we'll do a few examples in this lesson and you'll feel much better about it. So now what we're gonna do is sub, um, multiply that negative into the bracket. So it's gonna be 2x take away 10, take away 4x equals to negative six. So then we end up with negative 2x, and then I'm gonna take that 10 over to the other side where it will become a positive. And so we end up with um, negative 2x equals to four, and so therefore x is negative two. So now we have x. To find y, what we can do is you can take that x value, and you can, you have options. You can plug it back into that equation in the place of x. You could plug it into that equation in the place of x, or what I like to do is I plug it into the third equation in the place of x, because the goal is to find y. And this equation is already written so that y is by itself. But as I said, you can plug it into the other equations. It does give you the same answer at the end. All right, so we end up with y equals 10 plus four, and then the x is negative two. So we end up with y equals to 10, take away eight, and so y is equal to two. Okay, so that's the final answer. X is negative two, y is positive two. Let's do some more examples now. So with the substitution method, and remember, I mean, in an exam, if they don't tell you what method to use, you could draw these two lines right now and you could find out where they intersect. You could use the elimination method where you cancel out the x's, for example, or we can use this new substitution method that we are busy learning right now. It's good to know all of them in case you are expected to do a specific one in a test or exam 
environment. So remember with this technique, we're gonna call this equation number one, this equation number two. Now, can you see any X's or Y's that look, that are almost by themselves? See, I don't like these ones. I don't like any of those because they've got those threes in front of them. So that's not really nice. We can use those, but then we're gonna have to divide by three later. But instead, what I like is this Y over here. It is completely, it doesn't have any numbers. We just need to move some things around and it will be by itself. So I'm gonna take that equation and I'm gonna move the three X over to the other side, like that. And then I'll call this equation number three. Then what you do is you take that equation and you plug it or you substitute it into the equation that we have not used. So we're gonna substitute it. And you don't always have to use number two. It just looks like that because that's how it's worked out in these two examples that I've done. But many times you would actually start with the first one. It doesn't really matter. So we're gonna substitute number three into the one that we haven't used, which is number one. So we're gonna take this Y and we're gonna plug it into that Y. So what that means is that, and, and then what, so whatever, this, okay, so in that place of that Y, you're gonna replace it with all of this, okay? And the reason we can replace, uh, we don't have to replace it with Y, but we can replace it with all of this, is that they are equal. They're the same thing, technically. So what we'll get is three X, take away three. Now please, in brackets, it must always go in brackets, minus nine plus three X equals to three. Now we just go multiply this negative three into the bracket, so that would become a positive 27 because negative three times negative nine is positive 27 and then negative nine X equals three. So now we just need to do our thing over here, simplify this however you like. Um, so I'm gonna take the three X and the nine X, I'm gonna subtract them, so that's negative six X. I'm gonna take the 27 over to the other side so it becomes a negative. And so we end up with negative six X equals to negative 24 we then divide both sides by negative six, and x is equal to positive four. Now at this step, you need to get y, because we found x, so you have options. You can plug that x back into equation one, you could plug it back into equation two, or as I said, what I like to do is plug it back into equation three. The reason is, is that we are trying to now find the y value, and this equation already has the y value by itself but you can use these ones as well. It does give you the exact same answer. It'll just take a little bit longer. All right, so we're gonna say y equals to negative nine plus three, and then x is equal to four. Um, you see what I did? I just plugged it into there. And so y is equal to negative nine plus three times four, which is 12. Negative nine plus 12 is three. So the final answer is x is four, and y is three. So if you had to draw these two lines, that is where they are intersecting, when x is four and y is three. And our last example. So step one, get x or y, get ax or ay by itself. So I straight away noticed this one, I like this one, because if I looked at this x, for example, it's got a negative, it's not the end of the world, but it's just not nice to work with. This one here has a negative four, this one has a negative, but this one has a positive. As I said, I could have used any one of them. It really does not matter, but you're trying to do the easiest way possible when it can, when it is possible. Like sometimes you might not always see it, okay? So I'm gonna take, uh, because all of the examples I've done in this lesson, I've been taking the Y, but it could easily have been an X as well. So I'm gonna take this Y over here Okay, so we'll call this equation one, equation two, and I'm gonna go rearrange equation one so that the, X, the Y is by itself. There we go, and I'm gonna call that number three. Then I'm gonna substitute that one into the equation that I have not used, which in this case is equation number two. So what this means is that we take this Y which is technically equal to this, and we take it and we put it into the Y of the equation that we have not used. So we're gonna plug it over there. So we're gonna say negative X, take away, then in brackets, we're gonna replace the Y with negative nine plus four X, and then we're gonna make that equal to negative six. And so we're gonna end up with negative X plus nine, take away four X. See how it became a plus? 
uh, because minus a negative and a negative is a positive. If you didn't have brackets, you may not have seen that. Or you maybe would have seen that one, but you wouldn't have seen this one. Okay, so and then that's equal to negative 6. Then I'm just going to simplify here, so that's going to give me negative 5x, and then I'm going to take that 9 over to the other side where it becomes negative. So we now end up with negative 5x equals to negative 15, divide both sides by negative 5 to get the x by itself, and so x should be 3. We're not done, that's just the x value, now we need the y. So remember, to find the, um, the y value, you can take that x and plug it over there, or you can plug it over there, or you can plug it over there. And so, as always, I'm going to use number 3 because it's the fastest in my opinion. So we're going to end up with y equals to negative 9 plus 4 times by 3, and so y is equal to 3. And so our final answer would be x is 3 and y is 3.